and doing the portrait of my son because uh, I guess it's, it's easy for me because I'm familiar with his face. When you do a portrait, usually, of a person I don't know, you have to spend a couple of hours talking to see how the features move uh, to feel some of his uh, inside, you know, knowledge. See, after I made it, this oval shape, then I'm going to start to put a feature on it. But the important thing is that the oval shape is like having a foundation where all the feature is going to be laid on. Very elementary shape. So you have to start, every part that I do, I start studying the profile. But that's, that's the key of, of all the volumes. make a line of where the perpendicular line of the forehead goes to the floor. And from there, I build up all the features. You start with the... having some details into the here. Mm -hmm. Working with texture, you know, sharp, sharp line from the face to the hair gives a little bit of different feeling of color. When you work in some place and then your eyes catches another element, sometimes I stop working and finish the element I've been doing previously and uh, correct the one I just discovered. So in this case, I go back to the face instead of finishing the hairdo. Get all the little nuances of the zygomatic bone and the different layer, the volume of the forehead. Now I go back to the hair, and I wasn't satisfied with that tool, but I think a broom, it would do more. You know, a brisk broom would be nice. I don't have it. I just had a, a small broom there, but it gives the texture and the direction of, of the hair. see is it was very basic painted but it's going to have just a hint at the end you know coming through the overall patina like an antique antique feeling <laughs> 